his clothes and with a Midas touch. Everywhere he went, through the grace of God, upon his life he showed Christ in word and in deed. A pragmatic evangelist to the core, a dynamic leader, a quintessential personality, spirit-filled archbishop, prayer warrior, and a born-again child, a peace setter, a goal-getter, dynamic preacher, and a man with a large heart. departed Archbishop and Missioner rest in perfect peace. Please let us stand. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John Glory to Christ our Savior. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And you know the way, where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and yet you do not know me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I said to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or hers, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than this will he do, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of Christ. Please have your seats. Thank you. We will have the divine mandate voices uh, give us a ministration in song. Uh, just before our Father in the Lord, the Right Reverend Dr. Jide Adebayo will give us the word. Divine mandate voices. <laughs> The Lord is good all the time, and all the time our God is good. There is no one like him. He is the most high. He is the awesome God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, I know I want Okay, Kogi. Ben Beleku. I did for joy, good. Lord, you are wonderful. I bless the Lord. You are holy. And 
forever. Come on. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I bless you, Lord. Oh, 
give it to him. Do your hands like this. Whatever the situation, I am Thank you. And now we invite our Father in the Lord, the Right Reverend Dr. G. D. Adebayo. You're most welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to imagine what our Father in the Lord will be doing if you were to preside on an occasion like this. I know he will tell us that we should cheer up. I know he will give himself to praises and thanksgiving. I know because not that he was not human but because he was a man of faith was a man who believed what he preached. So he would have said, do not be sad. Do not weep for me. Do not mourn for me. Because I am going, or I am, have gone to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, you also will be. That's what, so I want us to cheer up. That is my first assignment. Let us cheer up. How I wish those who are in heaven 
could come and communicate with us to say, look at me where I am. Stop weeping. Jesus Christ said, don't weep for me. Weep for your children. I think we should weep for ourselves, not the man who had gained victory. We call them saints triumphant. We are the saints militants. We are the one still in battle. They have won the victory. Shout hallelujah. A livelier hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Glorious Father, we thank you very much for the great life that your servant lived. We thank you for grace giving him to be who he was to you and to us. Thank you for a life of impact and achievement. Thank you for a life lived in your service from the beginning to the end, serving and laboring without counting the cost. Thank you, Lord, for everyone, particularly our mama, mama, Professor Lumakai, and Richie, and the entire family, and our grandma, and the entire Diocese of Lagos. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. At this time, O oh Holy Spirit, we hand over unto you, and we ask that you tell us what you have proposed and proposed for us to hear, that no man will speak of himself, but will speak out of your mandate, out of your instruction, out of your command, so that at the end, the speaker and the hearer will be blessed, and the glory will be yours. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for this time. We thank God for bringing us together. We thank God for laying this on the hearts of the organizers. This is an awesome occasion. And it is great that we have dedicated this time to the praises of our God. I also like to thank the supervising bishop of this Diocese of Lagos, and our mama, the Holy Shola, and mama Lydia, Dr. Lydia Odedeji, for granting us this great uh, privilege to share a word of comfort and encouragement and to charge us to look at ourselves even at this time. We bring our heartfelt and profound commiserations from the clergy and the lady of the Diocese of Ibonina West to the entire Diocese of Lagos. From my wife, particularly, and children. My wife, Mrs. Fuluke Adebayo, is currently out of the country on national assignment, and she sends her profound greetings. We commiserate with our esteemed Mama Lagos, Professor Mrs. Motrayo Lumakaye, Richie, her son and brother, Grandma Ulumakaye, and the entire and larger Ulumakai family. We greet our esteemed father and grandfather, his great, the most reverend Dr. Ephraim Adebola Ademowo, and our mama Odurante Ademowo, and pray for the strengthening of the Lord at this very difficult time. This evening, I'm sharing on what I have titled Forever with the Lord. Can we say it together? Forever with the Lord. Thank you very much. First Thessalonians chapter 13 verse 14, chapter 4 verse 13, verse 14 and 17. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Then, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord forever. Chapter 3. And verse 11, 
The writer Solomon says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to the end. Forever with the Lord. Can I pause to greet my father and the Lord, right Reverend Professor Dapashaju, my brother, Bishop on the coast, and my brother, Ebenezer, and the bishop's wives. Please pardon me. I was given 10 minutes, so I'm trying to race against time. Please, not that I uh, overlooked you. Amen. Forever with the Lord. James Mount of Mary lived between 1771 and 1854 and wrote the hymn, Forever with the Lord. Based on St. Paul's writing on the eschatology in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which I just read. Here he gives us an insight to what happens after the death of those who are in the Lord. He emphasizes that Christians only sleep, and when we sleep, it stands to reason that we must wake up. There is therefore a time to sleep and a time to wake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He talks about the rapture, at the sound of the trumpet. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We see that also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. And in verse 16, he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first forever with the Lord. In that hymn, the first verse by Montgomery talks about immortality and eternity. Forever with the Lord. Amen. So let it be. Life from his death is in that world. It is immortality. Here in the body pains, absent from him I roam, yet nightly pitch my moving tents, at this much nearer home. Hallelujah. So James agreed with St. Paul that what God grants in the final resurrection in Christ's coming is immortality. A life that does not recognize or submit to death. Number two, that mortality means being present in the body but absent with the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 5 one to eight. And number three, yet each day that we live on earth, we are a day nearer our salvation. Each day we live on earth, we are a day nearer immortality if, and I say if, we are in the Lord. Hallelujah. So immortality is a state of endless life beyond the power of death. Immortality does not subject to death. So as long as we are subjected to death, we are still mortal. We are human. But then while we are alive, we are given the grace and the privilege to prepare for immortality and eternity. And that is the essence of this segment of this prayer, of this program, that we understand that at the resurrection, all mortals will resurrect but not all mortals will gain immortality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, e eternity is an endless phenomenon. And it does not give the mortal man, the finite man, the definite man, the limited man, an understanding of what it could be. It is only meaningful to our limitless, our endless God, a God who lives forever. He is the one who understands what eternal life or eternity is. So eternity, therefore, needs to be taught, needs to be emphasized, because eternity is not just a possibility. Eternity is also a reality. I say that again. Eternity is not just a possibility. It is a reality. The hope of living forever with God 
like Adam and Eve in the garden, hearing the sound of the Lord, walking in the garden at the cool of the day, being able to talk to the angels, the apostles, to the Lord God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, this is our hope. And by this, St. Paul says, we should comfort one another. That there is something beyond death. There is something that we enjoy, not temporarily, but permanently. Hallelujah. So Martin Luther, the great reformer and theologian says, and I quote, All which happens through the whole world happens through hope. No husbandman will sow a grain of corn if he did not hope it will spring up, that is, it will grow and bring forth the ear. How much more we are helped on by hope in the eternal life. Can I plead with you, beloved in Christ Jesus, put eternity in your heart. Embrace eternity. Live every day thinking about eternity. Learn to love eternity. Because eternity is not just a concept. Eternity is not just a possibility, but it is a reality. That is where we go. In this time of grief, therefore, there is no better phenomenon or concept that can give us comfort than the tearless, tear-free, fear-free, worry and anxiety free, toil free, eternal life with God. Eternal life is tearless, no tears, no sorrow, no anxiety, no worry. We are just weeping. And at best, we are singing. We are joining the elders to cast down our crowns and worship the Almighty eternally. And so, we shall forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Eternity, it is not just one way, it's a dual way. There is eternal life and there is eternal death. Eternal life is the life of justification through the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary, his death and his resurrection. And eternal damnation. And so at this point, beloved in Christ Jesus, we must make a choice. Where do I want to spend eternity? Is it forever with the Lord or forever with Satan who is already condemned to the fire? His own judgment has been done. Hallelujah. There is a choice that we must make. John chapter 5, verse 28, 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So there is eternity of justification. There is eternity of condemnation. We need to make a choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, when a child of God sleeps, like what we are witnessing now, it is an opportunity to regain immortality. It is an opportunity to embrace eternity. It is an opportunity to dwell forever with the Lord. So we are confident. We are encouraged. We are rejoicing in the fact that our Father in the Lord is forever with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is painful. But then... If we look at the bigger picture, it is a thing of joy. Our loss here is the gain of heaven. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Our loss here is the gain of heaven. And we must thank God because we knew him. We are conversant with his testimony. We've had it today. He can put a finger on the very day that he gave his life to Christ and the very person who led him to Christ. How many of us can say that? And you can say, on so-so dates, I, Olajide, I gave my life to Christ. 
it was after this person spoke to me or I heard this message. This is the thing we should worry about now. Yes, it is painful. I can imagine. No, all of us are broken. Some of us are stronger than others. But the point is, what should matter now is, where, if it were to be my turn, where will I spend eternity? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, our Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for us to gain eternity. And why? Because the original concept and plan of God for mankind was for man to live with him forever. In Genesis chapter 2, the Bible tells us that God planted a garden and caused all manners of trees to grow. And in that scripture, two trees were specifically mentioned. Number one was the tree of life. The tree of life was said to be in the center of the garden. In other words, the tree of life is the center focus, is the purpose of that garden. Another tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Other trees were unnamed. And those two trees have great significance concerning the plan and purpose of God for creation. And the Lord said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But he never said, do not eat of the tree of life. Why? So when he made us, he made us to live forever with him. The fellowship that he was enjoying was his design and his plan and his purpose. Unfortunately, the serpent, Satan came, deceived mankind, and we lost it. Hallelujah. It was that one that God said, in the day you eat it, you will surely, somebody say surely. The day you eat it, you will surely die. That was the one that Satan caused mankind to eat. And as soon as that happened, everything changed. God had to re-strategize because his purpose cannot be changed. Can we say together, God's purpose cannot be changed. No one can change it. He will not be changed for my life. Hallelujah. So if you look at chapter 3 from verse 21, the Bible says, it says now that this man had now eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he has become like one of us. So let us chase him out of the garden so that he does not go eat of the tree of life and live forever. Did he ask him not to eat of it? No. So God planned that we live with him forever. So when that was messed up, he brought Jesus Christ again. So we could see from John, John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That is Eden recreated. Eden regained. Jesus came to renew Eden. He calls it paradise. In Luke chapter 23 verse 43, he said, today you shall be with me where? In paradise. Paradise means garden. It means a park. It also means Eden. The same word, Gar Eden, the garden of God, that was called paradise in Genesis, Eden in Genesis is called paradise, where? In the New Testament. So, God intended and still intends that we live with him forever. And that is why we are rejoicing because today, we will not die totally. Because Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He is the one who says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have what? Life 
I have what? Life abundantly. Abundant life is found in heaven. So whoever believes in Jesus will live forever with the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the truth who came to give us the truth and to tell us the truth. Hallelujah. That is why we believe that our Father in the Lord has, who has a sterling, undeniable testimony of accepting Jesus as his Lord and Savior, who believed so much and preached so much, so heartily, so energetically, the Lord Jesus Christ. He lived only for 53 years, but left a legacy of more than 153 years. I have followed his ministry from Elisha. You saw the church. This was a man who laid a foundation of a church and got a date for dedication. He laid foundation and got a date for dedication. And the date was reluctantly given to him. And he built the church and the church was dedicated on that same date. I thought we would shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the man we're talking about. 53 years from Elisha to Ijebu Jesha. Monumental achievement. From Ijebu Jesha to Otahye the, 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 the documentary had made my job easy. For those of us who followed it. Hallelujah. Then from Oto to Lagos. Four years like 40 years. Can I say that again? Four years, like how many years? Forty years. When I saw the entrance to the centenary city, I was almost shedding tears. How could a man conceive a project like this with that small head? It is not the size of the head, ladies and gentlemen, but the size of the heart. Am I speaking to someone here? So we're talking about a man who had done more than is, is enough. How I wish he runs this diocese to 70. What would we have had? Hallelujah. A man who loved and cared. He raised and mentored men and women. His life was a living epistle. Many have said that he, he is their father, he's our mentor, he's our teacher, he's our leader. We testify to that fact of his being so. Hallelujah. This is not a, a matter of rhetorics or vain speaking. It's reality. And he believed an, in the beneficial power of prayer. He believed in the efficacy of prayer. And he benefited immensely from prayer. He was a transformer, a leader, a transformational leader. I looked at his life and I imagined light. Light comes from generation. Our father was a generator. Hallelujah. Light comes from transformer. Our father was a transformer. Light comes from transmission. Our father was a transmitter. He transmitted his anointing to many. There are so many who will say, he is my teacher, my father. The testimonies are... By illumination. He was an illuminator. Wherever he got to, no matter how dark is the darkness, he brought light there. No matter how dark is the darkness, he was a bringer of light. He was like the one that God called in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, let there be light and there was light. Rejoice, shout hallelujah. Rejoice, cheer up. Cheer up. He is living with the Lord. He is forever with the Lord. A man full of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I've had conversations with Baba Lagos. And look at him, I said, in my spirit, I said, this man has wisdom. He was a man full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom like Stephen. No wonder like Stephen, he did not stay long. Like Jesus Christ, he did not stay long. Like John the Baptist, he did not stay long. But as the legacies of all those ones still remain today, so shall his legacies remain till eternity in the name of Jesus Christ. But look, 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 before you say amen, you and I are the legacies. 
we must keep it running. We must keep the fire burning. We must keep the flag flying. We must not allow Satan who deceived the man at the beginning to deceive us again. Because as Jesus had brought back paradise, so Satan had brought back the strategy of cunningness to deny us again of paradise. The spirits of the devil, they are all over the place now, bringing deception of all sorts. The spirit that comes through fashion, fashion, lost. The Bible calls something, I fool of adultery. You see somebody with this type of eyelashes is not satisfied. He goes and bought plastic and make it longer. I full of what? Adultery. Beloved in Christ Jesus, the devil is out again to deny us a second time of being with the Lord forever. Will you allow him? Beware of this lying spirit. Lying spirit is another strategy of the devil. Beware of the spirit of entertainment, sports, social media, football, Chelsea, and all, and all. What's up? I'm not saying what's up is not good. I run the diocese whenever I'm not there via what's up, but I can tell you it's a time waster. Am I speaking to someone here? Beware. Our Father will not want us to be deceived by the spirit of the devil a second time. Jesus paid this, the price with his blood and the man of God we're talking about today lived and died telling you to repent. If you don't repent, you make his life to be vain. We, we, shall we make his life to be vain? Can we make the no louder if it is true? I didn't hear you. His ministry among us must not be in vain. That is what you can do, not this weeping and mourning. That's why I said at the beginning, we need to weep for who? For ourselves. He has won the battle. He's there. It's now left for you and I. We must avoid the second deception of the devil. Avoid provocative dressing. Avoid tattoo, same sex, bisex, pornography. They're all over the place, even in the church. Stealing, embezzlement, corruption has killed our country. This man cried like a voice in the wilderness. For us to do what? To repent. For us to be with the Lord forever, I'm putting this before you like Moses. Moses said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I've Set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, do what? Choose life. That both you and your descendants may live. Choose life. Put eternity in your heart. What shall we do therefore? For us to be with God. What we do is to repent. Admit, repent, and we go to God forever. Can we bow our heads and talk to God together? We want to be with the Lord forever. Do not allow the deception, the first deception to happen the second time. Talk to God. Devil is out again to get us, to deny us of being with the Lord forever. But we will not accept because Jesus has shed his blood. Please talk to God. Ask God for forgiveness. And if you want to give your life to Jesus as a beginning of living with him forever, why not just wave your hand as all eyes are closed? Just wave it wherever you are. You want to make a commitment. I want to live with the Lord forever. I want to live with, thank you very much. I see that hand, I see it. I see that also, I see it. Lift it up where, just where we say, Lord, I am here. Thank you. I want to live with you forever. Forgive my sins. I don't want to be deceived like Adam and Eve were deceived at the beginning. 
Deliver me from the deception of Satan. Because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood to earn us eternity that we may be with God forever. Please. As I pray with you, please say with me. My Father and my God. I come to you just as I am. I need your forgiveness. Thank God we have prayed today for forgiveness. Nothing hidden, nothing kept back. Be merciful unto me. Write my name in the book of life. I believe that Jesus died and rose for my sake. I believe that the blood that he shed was shed for me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, we pray for mercy upon your children. They have told you who they are, even though you knew. Please forgive them. Write their names in the book of life. And those of us who had surrendered to you, Father, uphold us to the end. Grant that we will not fall away so that we can be with you forever in your eternal kingdom. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. God bless your ministry. And we are gradually getting to the closing of uh, today's um, round of events. Uh, but definitely not before one more solo rendition by Ugochuku Unjoku, titled Time to Say Good Night. on me sing. Yes, I know that in a room so full of light that all the light is missing. But I don't see you with me, with me. Close of the windows, bring the sun to you see that you met in the darkness time to say goodbye horizon and ever far would I have to find them alone
address to our Archbishop, and may God comfort us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, to give the appreciation remarks, uh, let us welcome the coordinator of this event, Venerable Williams Mehison. Bishop, please, the brigade just want to wrap their event. The boys' brigade just one minute, please. We want to celebrate our Father in God, the Most Reverend Humphrey Bamshidiolu Makai, with one of his legacies for Lagos Diocese, which of course is the Diocesan Anthem that we'll be taking to celebrate him at this service. It's just the first, service, the first verse only, and it is actually the Anglican Communion Brigade Diocese of Lagos. Praise God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to, on behalf of the entire committee, to appreciate all of us for finding time from our tight schedule to be here today. We know what the country is, especially the issue of fuel scarcity, but in the midst of it all, we're able to find our way to this venue. 
It is our prayer that God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Starting with the supervising bishop and wife, the right reverend doctor and Mrs. James Olushola Dedeji, the bishop of Lagos West. We want to appreciate you for coming. God bless your ministry. The preacher of today, the right reverend Dr. Olajide Adebayo. God bless you, sir. Olajide Adebayo. God bless you, sir. We want to appreciate the right reverend uh, Mrs. Shino Kurishola, the diocese on the coast. You are welcome. God bless you. Uh, the right reverend professor uh, is wearing two caps today as a uh, member of the family as well. So you are welcome. God bless you, sir. The right reverend Ebenezer Akurede and Mrs. Akurede Okuyelu, you are welcome. God bless you. Uh, Mama Fabuluja, you are welcome. God bless you. And uh, all uh, Mama bishops, you are all welcome. God bless you in Jesus' name. We want to appreciate the diocese officials as led by the Honorable Chancellor, the Honorable Justice, and Mrs. Ad, uh, Adidayo Oyebanji. Uh, Mama, God bless you. All the legal luminaries, uh, we want to appreciate you. The registrar, the deputy registrar, the secretary, please, you are all welcome. God bless you in Jesus' name. We want to especially commiserate and appreciate the immediate and the extended family of the Uluma Kaes. Uh, in time as this, God will continue to support you. God will continue to empower you. He will wipe away your tears in the name of Jesus Christ. All our guests, all those who have participated in one way or the other, in fact, for cooperating with us to have this program go this way, we appreciate all of you. Those who pray, those who read the Bible, those who sang, we want to appreciate you. The media team, you are wonderful. The divine mandate voices, the guide us towards, we want to appreciate all of you. We didn't leave behind all the ministers in the Diocese of Lagos, the dignity. led by the provost, who want to appreciate all of you. God bless you in Jesus' name. One of our retired Baba is here, Baba and uh, Rufus Akiwali. You are welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I want to especially appreciate the two churches that collabo to host this program. The Church of the Restoration 1004, and uh, the Anglican Church on the Peninsula, their vicars and their members. God bless you for your generosity. If you want to clap, clap very well. Thank you so much for putting all these things in place. I salute the courage of Mrs. Agboro because uh, yesterday night, I know, I'm not sure if she had slept since yesterday when she was making sure that everything is done perfectly here. I want to specially appreciate you. The committee members uh, led by Agbelusi, uh, Orelu Agbelusi, is a rugged man. I want to specially appreciate him. God bless you all in Jesus' name. If I say a word of prayer, say a word of amen. amen. Tomorrow is another day. And that will be at our Savior's Church, TBS, from 4 p.m. And uh, the program is evening of tribute, songs and tribute, after which there will be a candlelight procession. Please, you are invited to that program. And all the youths, you are to be involved in the candlelight procession. Put on your white T-shirt of any kind, white 
t-shirt of any kind. The candles will be provided. And those who are designated to carry the special candle, the glazed candle, will be communicated duly. I want to appreciate Mr. Barrister Benga Bello, who anchored this program, and the Reverend Canon Goodluck Nwosu for anchoring this program. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, friends and brothers from Manor College of Theology, you are welcome. You are especially welcome. God bless you. On Monday, the program continues. On Tuesday, same thing again and again. We commiserate again and again with the entire family. God bless you. God bless you. The, there is no comfort we can give to ourselves than the one God has given to us. The man himself was a gift to the church. I will just say a word and then hand over the microphone. Uh, I have a peculiar problem, and the peculiar problem is any of my friends or acquaintance who become bishop, the moment he's appointed a bishop, I withdraw. I, I just withdraw. I don't know why I have that problem. I just withdraw. But when this bishop came to Lagos, he said the day he was enthroned, he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw me, that we were working together. And he said in that dream, had this man committed offense in Lagos because we never had any program together. Said, and since then, we were like so contagious. And working is a man that I can walk to his office at any time, at any day, and work very, very closely. And I want to remember uh, again the day when he gave the name for the YPF. And that is, he said that we should think about a name, myself and Kanodina. I were bringing names. I won't tell you the funny name we're bringing. He now gave this name. And then he said something. Whatever does not have name does not exist. And it is that name that the YPF is standing today. So the legacy he had left behind is what we are building on. And God will help us to build on this legacy and to live to be able to make him also happy wherever he is. God will continue to console all of us in Jesus' name. I want to hand over the microphone to the supervising bishop for the benediction. The Lord be with you. Can we please bow our heads as we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for the life well spent of our highly respected Father of Faith, the Most Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishibi Ulumakaye. Thank you for living testimonies all around us. Thank you, Lord, for the word we've had tonight, what we've seen in a documentary. And what we have sung as sons in this meeting. Father, we ask that through your power, through your name, none of us will fall by the wayside. We know that we shall meet again where parting will be no more. We acknowledge that Jesus, you are the way, show us the way of righteousness. Jesus, you are the truth. Let your truth set us free. Jesus, you are the life. Give us life forevermore. And we pray, O oh Lord, that our journey here on earth will end in eternity with the Lord. Dismiss us with your blessings. Where nobody is, may you be there for us. Take care of the family left behind. Give them heavenly consolation. Take their eyes away from this grave to the sky and give them joy in perpetuity. So unto God's gracious mercy, protection, loving kindness, good health, we commit all of you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. 
the Lord show himself mighty on your behalf. And the Lord will take all of us from where we are operating to where we should be operating. And he will take all the glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forevermore. Let me appreciate all our fathers in the Lord. Papa Shaju, we want to acknowledge your presence and thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you. Baba Namuti, we want to appreciate you, sir. We'll appreciate the men of God in the house and all our mama bishops. Please give us one minute. Don't rush out. We are all living here. You will get home in joy in Jesus' name. The legal luminaries, I want to appreciate you. The kind of support is second to none. And the Lord will bless your families in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Please, all the clergymen and their wives to collect their full pack at Abigail Luole Center. All clergy... Be worshiping as you go as uh, Frank Edward uh, lead the worship. All clergy and their wives collect your food at Abigail Luwale Center. Thank you. Lord, you reign forever, you're the same. I got my two give mama, mama, eh. you lifted me and gave me a song. I got my two give mama, mama, eh. woke up your name, eh. mama, eh. tune him to your mom, mama, eh. Now it it a There is 